Welcome to my review for Darksiders 2 on PS3, where I can't say for sure that the sequel is better than the original Darksiders. Probably have to go back and play that one again to do a better comparison. I can say with confidence that it's at least as good as the first one. And I did have a great time playing both. Darksiders 2 is made up of a lot of different gameplay elements, all of which are done very well. There's lots of fun platforming style elements reminiscent of Prince of Persia, what with the running and scaling on walls. There's even more so of this element than I remember in the first one. There's satisfying combat with boss battles that keep you moving and using your tools. There's engaging switch and portal-like puzzles of which some did require actual thought living up to the puzzle name. And I say that because some other games try and pull off puzzles that aren't really puzzles. Oh, there's a picture of these three things in front of me, but the ones in front of me look a little different than the picture. Whatever do I do? Maybe match them to the picture? Like, it's not that simple. You actually need to put some thought and logic into figuring out some of the puzzles they put in front of you. When Darksiders 2 first came out, I wasn't sure if I would like it or not because I heard that the RPG elements were ramped up a little bit. And I guess that was true, but it in no way impeded someone like myself that not big on RPGs. And when I say RPGs, I'm talking more of the classic turn-based style RPGs. In fact, when I think about all the loot gathering and merchants you can go to to buy new things and how do I make sure I'm balancing myself out with my different clothing and armor options and weapons. It really wasn't that hard to figure out. And thinking back, I can't help but compare to Borderlands because in both games, I don't remember actually having to buy any equipment from any of the merchants. Pretty much all the best stuff I got, I got that was just dropped from killing other enemies. I did like the skill upgrade system in this game because it doesn't force you to pick a side. With the powers you can get there are two trees that you can follow but you don't need to start at the top of the tree to get some of the skills that are further down. So you can kind of pick up in the middle as your character reaches certain levels which overcomes that hurdle a little bit that other games have when there's a, a choice like a good side, bad side type of thing. And if you pick one path, you're pretty much stuck picking that path. Not the case here. I felt the story mode was a good length. The side mission fetch quests will keep completion as busy for a while. The world does seem larger overall than in the first Darksiders, but also less varied. It really feels pretty much like desert with stone buildings, with a quick jaunt down to earth. But overall, there is really very little to complain about in this game. It's a solid title that should make any fan of the original happy to enter this world again.